birthday surprise for you. I invited Grandpa and Grandma. You did what? My husband's surprise was evident, as he was told that from our innocent daughter. The sound of a scream echoed in the bathroom where he'd been having an affair. You've been having a good time while I was away, haven't you? Well, let's have the real surprise now. My name is Ruby. I'm a 32-year-old working mother with a 4-year-old daughter and a husband who works in an office. We've been married for 8 years, but our relationship has been cold lately. I have a woman's intuition that he's cheating. The first hint was when our daughter Laura turned 3. He always made it home for her birthday, but that year he worked on a weekend. Sorry, I have to go in for an urgent job. And with that, he left. He said he could wear casual clothes, which was suspicious enough. But he was dressed too nicely for just work. It was super suspicious. We had planned to go to the zoo, and Laura was looking forward to it, so we went without him. He finally came home, just after midnight, with Laura already asleep, and her birthday over. If it was just work, I could forgive him, but he reeked of women's perfume, and was obviously drunk. It was a dead giveaway. Even though he normally doted on Laura and never helped around the house, I decided to tolerate it for her sake, thinking it was just a fling. But that was a mistake. He seemed to have taken it seriously. His business trips and late nights increased, something that never happened before. He even started claiming he was staying overnight at the office. Our conversations dwindled. What hurt most was how he became cold to Laura. He used to dote on her, but suddenly he stopped paying attention to her. Daddy, can we go to the park? And before he'd say, Sure, let's go. But now he'd say, Sorry, Laura. Daddy is tired from work. And then lie on the couch, grinning at his phone. I could bear it if he still cared for Laura, but since he didn't, it might be time to end this. Luckily, I have a job that could go full-time. Raising a child alone would be hard, but having a husband who might as well not be there wouldn't be much different. One day, I thought about my father-in-law. He's a stickler for rules and despises dishonesty. He'd even pick up litter and lecture the person who dropped it. Most people would back down when they saw him because he's still built from his rugby days and works out regularly. Like others of his kind, my father-in-law also wears tight shirts. Exposing my husband at his parents' house seemed like a good plan. His father would definitely straighten him out. Just thinking about it made me excited. How does such a serious man raise a son who cheats? Timing is everything. Christmas would be awkward. And so I began thinking about divorce. Then, a small incident occurred. Laura, about to turn five, seemed excited. She asked, Mom, can we go somewhere for my birthday this year? My husband had missed her birthdays at three and four. This year, her birthday fell on a weekday, making it hard to go out that day. But we had weekends. Hmm, maybe we can go out the Sunday before. On your birthday, Daddy and I will be at work, and you'll be at daycare. I'll ask Daddy. Despite his coldness, she still loved him, which made my heart ache. She asked him when he surprisingly came home early, and he said, Sure, let's go to the aquarium. Watching her delight made me uneasy, and my fears came true. Jason later said, Sorry, Laura. Something came up at work. Go to the aquarium with Mommy. Really? You can't come? Daddy's busy. She looked tearful, but he left without caring, off to another date, no doubt. That was it for me. I hugged Laura and firmly decided on divorce. About a month after her birthday, something even worse happened. I went to pick up Laura from daycare, but they said her father had already taken her. He did? He said you had an urgent matter. Had we been divorced, they would have checked with me but as we're still married, they didn't. I rushed out and tried calling him, but he didn't answer. An hour later, he texted. 
We're just at a cafe. That was it. He came home just as I finished dinner. Why did you take her without telling me? Why not? She enjoyed it. He didn't even feel guilty. He went to change clothes, leaving me to ask Laura. Were you surprised when Daddy picked you up without telling me? Are you okay, sweetie? Laura nodded and said, "We had parfaits. It was delicious." I felt a bit relieved, thinking maybe he felt some guilt. If he could be a good dad again, maybe. But then she said something that shocked me. Daddy had coffee and the lady had a cake. A lady? Who was she? Ah,、uh, I don't know her. A bad feeling hit me. I showed Laura a picture and asked, "Was it her?" Laura immediately answered, "Yes, her." I held my head. Ah,、oh, that jerk! He had taken our daughter to meet his mistress. I gritted my teeth, and Laura said. Daddy said it was a surprise. A surprise? Yeah, he said she'll play with me a lot from now on. What the? Maybe my husband is thinking about divorce too. But does he really plan to take our daughter with him? Ugh, no way. I won't let that happen. I decided to move forward with a divorce quickly. Looking around the room, I noticed he wasn't there. And heard the shower running. I quickly packed my things and called my parents. I left the house with my daughter, leaving evidence of his affair on the dining table. My parents were worried when we arrived, and when I explained everything, they were furious with my husband. Their support was a huge relief. Fortunately, Laura could still attend daycare from their house. I informed the daycare about the divorce proceedings to prevent any sudden pickups, and told my workplace that I wanted to become a full-time employee after the divorce. I needed to find a new place to live once my income stabilized. For the sake of my new life, my busy days have begun. Days passed without any contact from my husband. He must have seen the photos and known we had left. Ugh! What a jerk. My mind was set on divorce when Laura suddenly said, "Daddy's birthday is coming up." I had completely forgotten about it. Just then, an idea struck me. <laughs> How about we celebrate Daddy's birthday? Yeah, she nodded. Despite everything, she missed him. I felt guilty inside. I'm a bad mother. On his birthday, I took Laura to the house. I quietly unlocked the door and peeked inside. Even though it was our home, I nodded at the sight of the shoes and entered. Where could he be? I tiptoed through the hallway, telling Laura to be quiet for the surprise. Then I heard voices. Of course, he's doing this while we're not around. The voices were coming from the bathroom. It was clear there were two people in there. The man's voice, undoubtedly my husband's. And the woman's voice, unfamiliar but easy to guess, and their voices sound, well, like they were having fun inside. Daddy's taking a shower. Seems like it. This wasn't good for her to see. Just as I was about to send her to the living room, she shouted, "Daddy, we're here!" I gasped. Laura, no. Daddy, mommy's here too. She continued. Oh, kids! Nothing beats their innocent, natural actions. She kept calling, oblivious to my panic. My husband and the woman must have heard her. Laura, is Ruby there too? My husband called out, panicked. No way! You said they wouldn't be back. The woman shouted. Quiet! Stop making noise. He hissed at her, but it was too late. I already had the video. Daddy, Laura, don't open the door. My husband pleaded. She innocently tried to open the bathroom door, but he blocked it. I had an idea. Laura, it seems Daddy doesn't want to come out. We should make sure the door stays closed, right? You mean lock him in? 
Yes, let's give him his birthday wish and lock them in. I smiled. Yeah, let's do it. Laura cheered, raising her fist. Prepare yourself, you stupid husband. I shoved the washing machine in front of the door. It was heavy, but I had an adrenaline rush. The door wouldn't budge now. I also blocked the hallway door. I put a small child's dresser in front of it. An adult dresser would have been too heavy. It wasn't much, but it would slow him down. Laura, what are you doing? Ruby, what are you doing? My husband's muffled voice came from the bathroom. What do you think? You don't want to come out, right? Of course I do. He shouted. Laura was still smiling. Then the front door opened, and I smiled at the new arrival. My husband continued, "Laura, be a good girl and move the things. Daddy's stuck." Mommy said it's a surprise for you, Daddy. A surprise? Yeah. You brought me a surprise for my birthday, so I have something for you too. And what is that surprise, sweetie? Well, you brought a lady for my birthday, so. I brought someone too," she said, glancing at the person behind us. "Oh, okay. Who is it, sweetie?" "My surprise to you is this. I brought Grandpa and Grandma for your birthday." "You did what?" he shouted from the bathroom. "Oh, you've got to be kidding me, Laura! Wait!" "No way! Your parents are here." Please tell me she's joking," the woman screamed. "Keep your voices down, guys." Father-in-law's voice boomed. "What do you think you're doing?" I suddenly heard a deep voice. It was raspy but full of energy and anger, despite his age. My husband fell silent immediately. "I said, what are you doing, you idiot son?" His father roared. Dad, my husband whimpered. My father-in-law, still muscular and imposing, was there. Perfect timing. I had called them with Laura's help. They were furious but willing to help, especially when it was a request from their dear granddaughter. This was going to be a showdown. Before I moved to my parents' house, I had hired a detective to investigate my husband's activities. We had clear photos of him entering a hotel with his mistress. That's why I could show our daughter the photo. You let your mistress live here. You left, so. And you moved another woman in. His excuse infuriated me. I knew they rarely left the house since she moved in, and it was laughable how perfect the timing was for them to be in the shower together. As I smiled in victory, I heard a loud rumble behind me. I turned to see my father-in-law standing there, fuming with rage. He was incredibly angry. I stepped aside from the door. My muscular father-in-law easily moved the small dresser and stood before the door, throwing it open with a bang. "Get out here, you fool!" Ugh! My husband screamed, and so did I. Why? Because he stood there naked. He must have pushed the washing machine aside and gotten out, but still naked. He grabbed a towel to cover himself. Why aren't you dressed? His father shouted. My clothes are gone. My husband whined. Of course I knew. There was only a towel outside the bathroom. It's easy to guess why, but it's an adult matter, not for a child's ears. I handed the woman towels and clothes, and they headed to the living room, still arguing. They both sat in front of me with their heads down. Laura was taken to the park by her grandmother. So, let's hear it. How long has this been going on? The detective had evidence of the affair, but not how it started or how long it had been going on. My husband, sweating, muttered, "I don't remember." Suddenly, there was a loud bang. It was his father slamming the table. "Speak up." Oh, scary! Can two words be that intimidating? I was glad I called my father-in-law. 
Two years ago, we started working on a project together and it grew from there. He admitted. I started suspecting my husband two years ago on our daughter's birthday. This seemed true enough. Why did you introduce her to Laura? He stayed silent and so did she. I glanced at her, but she kept her head down. I looked back at my husband and was startled to see my father-in-law standing beside him. He was just on the sofa next to him. Wow, ninja move. Speak up. Gosh, he's so intimidating. He's glaring up at my husband who's looking down. It's like a scene from a comic book or something. His bald head made him look even more intimidating. He wasn't bald because he shaved his head. It just happened. Plus, he's huge and muscular, making my less muscular husband look weak. Well, I thought she might become Laura's mother, so I wanted them to get along. He cheerfully said under his father's pressure. That will never happen. Laura stays with me. You'll take her from the father she loves? What? From the father who ignores her? Shut up. I snapped, influenced by my father-in-law's anger. I took a deep breath and said, Divorce is final. I'll take Laura. You pay alimony and child support in a lump sum. It's your fault for being unattractive. I'll never pay all that. He retorted. But my father-in-law grabbed his mouth. Don't you dare speak to her like that, you piece of shit. My husband whimpered. His father's muscular hand was pulling at my husband's mouth. Yeah, keep going. I felt a bit of satisfaction watching my husband get his comeuppance while I looked at the still silent woman. You'll also pay alimony. What? Why should I? You knew he was married. You worked together. There's no way you didn't know. There are family photos everywhere, too. Don't lie. I can't afford it. Then your salary will be garnished. You, you can't do that. You ruined a family. Don't think you'll get away with it. Finally realizing her position, the woman turned pale. Behind me, my father-in-law continued berating my husband. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll value my family, so please stop. I'll straighten you out, you idiot. A wrestling match ensued. Dad, please don't break anything. We have to sell this house. I called. I divorced my husband and got the alimony and child support in a lump sum. Since he had squandered money, his parents covered the alimony and child support. Ruby, we're sorry for our idiot son. They apologized. That was enough. I held no grudge against them. Just be the grandparents Laura loves, I said, and they teared up. The mistress also paid her alimony with her parents' help and left her job, moving back home. Her parents farmed in the countryside, a life she had fled from before. Now she worked there to repay the money, complaining about the smelly manure. I didn't care about her anymore as long as she stayed out of my life. My ex-husband also returned to his parents' home. I wondered how he would repay his parents without keeping his job, but word got out at his company. He was shunned, especially by the women, and ended up quitting. Both of them being involved in the affair disrupted the workplace and their salaries were reduced. The atmosphere became so hostile that he left. <laughs> what a wuss. How will he repay his parents? Like his mistress, he ended up working for his parents. My muscular father-in-law is known for his hard physical labor. I doubted my wimpy ex-husband could handle it. According to my former mother-in-law who visited us, he was collapsing under the strain both at work and at home, supervised by his tough father. I wondered if he was okay, but after a while, he disappeared. His father was furious, but I felt relieved knowing I'd never have to see him again. Laura's thriving, growing up healthy and happy. I had aimed to give her double the love to make up for her father's absence, but with four doting grandparents, she is always joyful. She quickly adjusted to life without her father. He had always been a shadow anyway. I became a full-time employee juggling work, housework, and parenting. But thanks to Laura's constant smiles, I'm always full of energy.